Hi everyone and welcome back to my War Games Hobby channel. Today I'm at the clubhouse on the last meeting before we shut down for a month. The government have issued uh, a new shutdown procedures and as from tomorrow we, we can't meet anymore until maybe early to mid-December. But we're taking the opportunity of having one more game at the club and I'll just show you around what's happening. Here we go at the club. We've got four games going on tonight and you'll see that it's four singles games, so 1v1. We are, um, we've got a pod down this end of four people and we're keeping two metres apart. Excuse the noise going on outside, that's fireworks. And then we've got another two games over there. You'll notice that we're, they're, they're podders. We've separated by a barrier of chairs and tables, which are six over six feet wide. So we can safely have uh, two uh, games, uh, four games going in. So we can safely have four games going on. The game I'm going to concentrate on tonight is a game of Rebels and Patriots. And uh, I've just done a demonstration game on how to play these rules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a game in action. I'm not going to video the whole game. I'm just going to highlight bits when they happen. But here we have the, uh, the American Continental Army here coming on the right. And over this side, we've got another command of militia. And on the far side of the table, we got a lot of British infantry. We've got grenadiers on, on the far right, three units of line infantry, and then we've got a, a unit of light infantry mixed with a unit, and there's another separate unit of Butler's Rangers. So we're going to see, um, see how all this pans out. We've just lined up and we're just going to have a game and see how it goes. Right, so I'll report back later when we've done the first move. Today's game, we're having two officers on each side. So this is the Continental officer here with the middle unit. And over here, we've got an officer with uh, one of the militia units in the middle. Uh, the Grenadiers have got an officer. And on the other side of the battlefield, you've got an officer with the light infantry. The Butler's Rangers are skirmishers on their own. One thing I need to mention is we're trying something different tonight. We're using a new house rule just as an experiment to see what, how this game uh, works out. Because as you can see, we're quite well spread out. And we're going to actually, going to, when, you, when we activate a unit, we're going to allow that unit to do two things. So it can move twice, it can move and fire, it can rally and move. But the extra additional thing that we're adding is you have to load as well. So what you can't do is move fire, move fire. You have to uh, load and fire or move and load. So load is an extra activation they have to do. So we're just going to see how it goes, just out of interest. Because we're playing quite a big game. We want the game to move quicker than normal. Because we've only, it's an only an evening game. We've only got a couple of hours. So we need to get our finger out. So I'll let you know how it gets on. Well, I rolled to move first, and as you can see, I rolled complete rubbish. You only have to roll sixes to move, and I was rolling twos, threes, and fours. One unit moved up bravely, they did a double move, but all the rest of these stay put. Over here, uh, the skirmishes didn't move, but the militia did. The ones in the wood moved at slower pace because they're going through the wood. We got the British Light Infantry of Zoom through that wood. And the line infantry have slowed up because they're not only in a wood, they're in a marsh as well. So they've only moved on half a move. So just a few more units to go. They're, they're not going anywhere. They can't move in there. They, they didn't roll enough to move. That one did because he gets a bonus from the officer. So the next unit, the Grenadiers, they can, they can do a double move if they wish so they can go up to 12 inches. This is just an experiment tonight. We want to get the, the game to move on quite fast. So we're doing double um, activations. 
So a unit could move twice if it, if it wished to. I don't know whether this is going to work, but we'll give it a try just for a bit of fun. We, we want a quick game tonight. And we've got quite a lot of table, uh, units on the table. So we'll, we'll see how it works out. Right, the first thing that's happened is the uh, skirmishers here, who are good shooters, they, they hit on 4 plus, fired at these skirmishers here, they're within 12 inches, and they caused a casualty. That unit then did a morale test, and it rolled badly, so it's taken the disorder marker. That's the very first shooting of the game. Right, so the Americans moved up. One unit here failed to move up, and it rolled a double one. So we had to roll on the table for when you roll a double one, and they took a disorder marker. The rest of the American forces moved up, and that unit in the middle there has formed close order. So uh, the Americans opened fire over here, caused the light infantry to go into disorder, and the militia moved up and opened fire on the um, butler's rangers and they took two casualties but they rolled very high on morale so they were fine okay so the first uh, move for the brits is the butler's rangers open fire on the militia that were just the other side of that hill and they caused four casualties the officer did survive he wasn't a casualty but they bowled very badly on the morale dice and uh, they have had to fall back shaken. Well, they've fallen back a half a move and they've taken two disorder markers. So that militia didn't like being shot at. Although they did manage to kill two Butler's Rangers initially, they've now taken four casualties and that unit has fallen back. These guys managed to rally and they're opening fire now on the militia and they're hitting on fours, fives and sixes. We'll just see how many they've got. Well, it's five hits. It is within 12 inches. So it is taking two hits to cause a casualty. So that's two more casualties on that unit. Okay, uh, an update. These light infantry opened fire on the militia and caused two casualties. The officer again survived. But the unit then unfortunately rolled a bad morale dice and they took another disorder marker, which means that unit must rout. It's gone. So uh, already the left wing of the uh, American force is disintegrating. Mind you, they are facing some good infantry, light infantry and butlers and rangers over there, but even so, that's quite a big hole already in the American line. Okay, well, the, the Brits continue to move up and open fire. You'll notice we've got little white markers in front of the unit. Because if you remember, I mentioned earlier, that we're trying um, two activations per unit in this game, just as an experiment to see how it goes. Because we're in a hurry, we haven't got much time tonight. But we've added loading as one of the activations. So these guys are now have all open fire and they, they need to reload. Uh, this unit took two casualties from those and those and they did also take a disorder mark because one of them on our test was fairly low. And this light infantry unit hiding behind the fence was shot at by the regulars coming up there and they lost a the figure as well but their morale was okay. So uh, a lot of shooting by the Brits, the Americans have taken a few casualties but nothing disastrous other than using their losing their militia over here now we've made another house rule because that officer wasn't actually a casualty from all that shooting we're going to allow him not to run off with the unit he'll join the next nearest unit to it which will be when it is his turn he'll move over here that's just a house rule we've we've introduced um, because we just felt it would be a bit mean for him to, he didn't die, he's still on the field, his unit run off but he's still there. Right, now it's the American turn, I'll come back and let you know later how, how we get on. Right, an update on this battle. The Americans are moving up on the flank of the British. You see these, uh, the last of the Grenadiers here, they get open fire twice by these two units and they were pretty decimated. Believe it or not, although they've got a red marker, which means they're, that's a permanent disorder marker, 
Um, their morale was really good. They rolled really high. I think they rolled, they rolled 11, so they were fine. We've got a unit over here, which is still trying to come onto the table and get in the battle, but it keeps rolling badly for morale. The light infantry are moving up through the marsh. So the Americans are, are winning the right flank at the moment. The, the Brits need to get that big unit over there involved and they're just standing there doing nothing. While uh, the Grenadiers, the brave Grenadiers, are getting decimated by, well, they basically got two units open fire. This unit couldn't open fire. They moved up on the flank, but couldn't open fire, but they will do next time. They've still got their first fire marker as well. This unit, incidentally, here still hasn't moved. They keep rolling bad for, for moving. They won't get activated. Coming across the battlefield, the, uh, the light infantry in, in with the pigs here opened fire again at the uh, light infantry just on the outside of that wood. And they caused two, two casualties, one of which turned out to be the officer. Uh, strangely enough, though, the unit then did a morale test and were fine. Uh, also, by witnessing an officer dying, these two units were, were, were all right as well. The sharpshooters opened fire. These um, long rifled sharpshooters got a massive 24 inch range. They opened fire on these guys, and with 12 dice, they rolled a six and a five. <laughs> all the others were ones and twos, so they basically missed. Uh, the other thing is the second militia unit, the officers now join that unit, uh, opened fire on the butler's rangers over here, caused a casualty, which meant it took a permanent disorder marker, it rolled a bad morale test and fell back. So, so the, the militia have taken revenge on that unit, destroying their, their buddies, which went off the field earlier. So the Americans are pushing on both flanks at the moment and the, the Brits need to... Uh, to get that big unit over there into action and, and do something in the centre. But at the moment, they're, they're not looking very good. This game doing two activations per unit per turn is certainly moving fast. It's fast and furious, I think, is probably the best description. Um, but, yeah, we're enjoying it. It's going well. We're certainly going to get a result before the, before the evening ends. Right, report back later. This unit's finally moved up. They can't see those behind the hill, so they open fire on this unit here, because that's the unit they can clearly see through that gap. And they did cause a casualty, but the unit was fine. It had a good morale. Uh, over here, the light infantry opened fire over here and caused a casualty and a disorder. But the big difference is in the middle here, the, the unit partly in the wood and the light infantry opened fire this unit that was in with the pigs and then they rolled a bad barrel and they went off the field so they've gone over here the butler's rangers um, did manage to rally they opened fire but they missed because they're only firing at half effect anyway they only get six dice at that range uh, although they're hitting on fours they only got two hits and they needed three to cause a casualty so um, nothing happened over there. Right, so basically the Americans have got the centre at the moment. But both their flanks are looking a little bit dodgy. But anyway, we are, and these troops badly need to move up for the Americans to exploit that, that weakness on that flank. All those guys over there, incidentally, are casualties. They're not in the game. So that unit and this unit are holding that flank against... One, two, three, four, five units. Right, let's, uh, let's carry on. Okay, latest update. Something quite funny happened. This unit here um, rolled a double one. So if you look on the, uh, the, the chart here, on the table on page 22, um, and I rolled a one again, it meant that that unit opened fire on its own friends by mistake. Fortunately, it didn't roll that well and it only caused one casualty and they didn't end up killing the officer, but a bit embarrassing really. So um, other than that, the Americans are doing well. This unit's finally moved up and they are whittling away the, the Brits. 
that unit took a casualty, but the morale was, it could have been worse. It took a disorder mark, but that's all. Uh, in the middle here, they took more casualties, the light infantry, but the morale was good. So the Americans are pushing up, but nothing dramatic happened in that move other than the fact that this got opened fire on its own, on its own side. Not very good. So it's the American turn. Over here, the infantry are moving up into the village. The light infantry here opened fire on the militia and caused two casualties, but they also managed to kill the officer. And then they did a bad morale test, and uh, so they're now disordered. So that was a good shot, good shooting by the light infantry, picking off their officer which is crucial because that unit is a green unit so it's got minus one on, it, on its discipline already so that might well cause the uh, the militia a bit of a problem okay the uh, the three butlers rangers here open fire on this um, militia here there's only three of them they rolled six dice but they managed to cause a casualty and then the, the militia rolled badly on their morale, so they've taken a second disorder marker. So they're looking very shaky at the moment. So how's the battle going overall? Well, the Americans are pushing round on this flank and doing quite well. But they virtually lost that flank. The militia are in, in dire straits having lost their officer. But they have got a very strong unit here in the wood. It's whether they can do any damage and stop the rot on this side of the battlefield as to whether um, the Americans can get a win or not. At the moment, I would still say the Americans have a slight, uh, slight advantage. But they've got to get these units into action. And at the moment, they, they haven't done anything at all. In fact, that unit, as I just told you, shot that unit in the back. And these have only just moved up for the first time in the battle. So... It's pretty close. I would say a slight advantage to the Americans, but um, not dramatically so. OK, update. Uh, the militia are struggling here. They've fallen back and the uh, Butler's Rangers are moving up. These guys failed to move in the middle. They moved round to get to the rear of this unit, but they are still unloaded. The unit that was here took a casualty and, and rolled badly on morale. So they actually routed. And, uh, and over here, the British um, big unit has fallen back. They've still got two disorder markers and they've fallen back. They failed to um, rally. The Americans have got more troops in this area. They're looking a bit dodgy here though. They've got to do something about that. And their militia are very weak and about to rout. We need to move these rifles up and do some damage. Right, a quick situation report here. This unit opened fire on the unit that was over here that already had two disorder markers and it took a third having had a bad morale test so they've routed. Uh, the other units come round to support it. These skirmishers finally moved up and caused two casualties over here and they'd taken a disorder marker. So the Brits are really looking in trouble now. Although they still have three units in, in the middle of the table the butler's rangers are virtually out of it the american militia are in trouble these are still very strong and shooting these guys in the back and they're whittling them away and of course they've got four the americans have got four units left in the right hand side of the village so it looks all but over but uh, we'll do one more move and see if the americans can recover Okay, so this game is, is effectively over now because um, the British have got two units that have got permanent disorder markers. This unit's got two and this unit's got one. The Americans over here have got no disorder markers at all in any of those units, so they're looking very strong. And, so, and there's another unit here that's got no disorder markers. So it's only a matter of time and the, the British have decided to um, capitulate. Uh, in, the, in the wood, incidentally, the militia are still falling back. Um, but even if they go off, it doesn't make any difference. The Americans have got enough troops in the village to take the village. And we're running out of time anyway. It was always a bit tight tonight to, uh, to get this game in. But by doing those double activations every move, it was interesting because it meant that we could move up quickly. 
and it meant that we could recover from our tests and still do another activation. But it did mean that uh, obviously if you want to shoot you've got to load and fire and that takes both activations. So once we got into a firefight it wasn't that different to the, to the normal rules. It just helped us move up quickly into the battle and helped uh, to try and rally troops. Uh, and if you did rally, you, you, you did another activation of some sort. So it made it interesting. It worked actually, actually worked quite well, much better than I thought it would do. Uh, so we'll have to do that again. If you want a big battle, you want to use a lot of troops and move them around the table, then it's, it's maybe worth considering doing that. It certainly seemed to, um, to work for us tonight. So the Americans were victorious. Um, but they took, here we are, these are the casualties, quite a few casualties on the way. Right, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Interesting game, something different. Um, it's the last, the last game we've got on our club. Because, uh, as you can see, the game's still carrying on on the other tables. Um, but now we're going to be finished until um, either we get back to be able to do these things again in, in December. Uh, if the government say we can, uh, we have to, we can come out of lockdown, we'll start again in uh, early or mid December, or we might have to wait until the new year. We'll just have to see. We'll all be playing uh, solo games at home, I think, and doing plenty of painting. All right. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it interesting, and um, I'll uh, see you again soon.